name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is A little later, towards the end of the liturgy, we're going to be celebrating the memorial for the repose of soul of Father John Bethusiak, our founding rector, on the occasion of the fourth anniversary of his falling asleep in the Lord. Now, some of you I see around that weren't here at that time during Father John's time, so I thought I'd give a little brief explanation of why he meant so much to us. Father John, after his passing, was eulogized in a really lovely reflection by Father Lawrence Farley, he's a priest up in Canada, who said that Father John was numbered with what he called the quote-unquote, the Lions of the OCA, along with Father Alexander Schmann, along with Father John Meyendorf, Father Thomas Hopko, he enumerated Father John with them to say that for the amazing things that they had done for the church, especially transitioning from the time historically from the Russian Metropolia to the Orthodox Church in America as we know it today. And Father John was incredibly gifted with everything that he was able to do. We know that as we see around his, all around, we're surrounded by his iconography. He was a prolific iconographer. As a matter of fact, some of the icons from Archangel Michael Parrish in Burbank, which was closed, he just did. We have those downstairs as well that we're going to utilize. So he was a gifted iconographer. He was a communications editor for the OCA. He wrote prolific stuff. He wrote the, the original Orthodox Church newspaper and then it converted to a magazine. He edited the vigil, which was, we used to have a diocesan newspaper before, this is way back in the old days, before there was any type of electronic media or internet. That's how we got our communication. And Father John was the editor of that. The questions and answers section that you see on the website of the Orthodox Church, it was done by him. But I say that having been blessed and been honored to be work alongside of him for 32 years, one thing I can say, that stuff, all the, and then he, he even did much stuff in, in Eastern Europe after the fall of communism in Russia and in, in Poland and Belarus, setting up youth camps and how to do youth ministry uh, since the time of communism when it wasn't allowed during those times. Father John was responsible for really setting that stuff up. And to this day, a lot of the models of what they do in those youth brotherhoods there are based on his work. But as I said briefly, what I was mentioning before is that the one thing I know about Father John is this. First and foremost, yes, he was a family man. He loved his family and he was fiercely proud of his grandchildren fiercely proud of them, but he loved his parish family. The two things I can say Father John loved the very most was worship and fellowship. Worship and fellowship. He loved worship when it was done well. He loved worship when everyone sang, when everyone was together, when we were surrounded by the clergy and we did what we had to do and make it beautiful. His love was the six-part Russian harmony music that you hear, and he would play that often. And that's really what touched his soul. That's really what inspired him, I think, was his love of worship. And secondly, was his love of fellowship. To be at coffee hour with one another. To be in that joy, in that moment, just to be with people that we genuinely like to be with. You know, early on when we started this parish, when we were a mission and then we got this property back in 1994, some of, we were getting a lot of dinks as a parish community. And one of the dinks, they said that, oh, we're that quote unquote, the happy church. <laughs> like, how is that an insult? I mean, you know, yeah, you, you can go to some of those other parishes and there'll be a dour looking older woman standing there with an usher badge going, may I help you when you walk in the door? That's really inviting. And a lot of people here know that what brought them to this parish was the inviting atmosphere when they first walked in that door. It's good to meet you. It's good to have you. Join us and stay for coffee hour. And Father John relished in that joy. And that joy exists to this day in this community. 
Brothers and sisters, we live in this legacy. We stand on his shoulders. He provided this community for not only this community, he was responsible for building St. Luke's in Palos Hills. From our parish, we had Holy Apostles uh, Church in Bloomington. We had St. Raphael's in Quincy, Illinois. And before that, he started St. Herman's Parish in Shillington, Pennsylvania. He was a rector of St. Mary's Cathedral in Minneapolis. He was prolific in what he did, and he was skilled and gifted by God in what he did. But most importantly, he loved parish family. He loved this parish. This was his home. And I can remember on the day of his funeral that I came in early to open everything up, and it was just he and I were there for the very last time. And I can remember thinking and, and kind of saying to him privately, you know, this is the joy that you built. Because he almost looked like he was smiling, that he was at home in this moment. We're going to sing Memory Eternal. We're going to do that memorial at the end of liturgy. But remember, brothers and sisters, that we are a church of joy. We are a church of fellowship. If you don't know somebody in this parish, that's your fault. Introduce yourself to them. Invite them to sit with you. Invite them to have something to eat with you, much like we do on Pascha. Invite people that you know to come to this church. Encourage your children not to go to soccer, not to go to band practice, not to go to yada, 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 but to come here and be part of our community. To learn, to live, to love. That's what we do. That's what we do best in this parish. And for that, we can pr prolifically thank our beloved father, friend, and mentor, Father John. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst.